Well, somebody say, I am receiving a new anointing for 100% victory over 100% of the enemy's power. You know, Mark, those are words that we like to say that maybe sound like preaching words, but these are the reality of this message. These are the realities of Dr. Cirillo's life and ministry. It is, and what I love about this teaching is that the new anointing is not just for the fivefold ministry, Good. apostle, prophets, teacher, evangelist, pastor, but it's for everybody. And that's what the early church understood and that gave them that unique characteristic that gave them the capability to reach the entire known world is that every man, mm. every woman, every young man, every young woman is a full-time servant of God. Oh. And as we take that responsibility, as we accept that mandate from God that I might not be a pastor, I might not be an apostle, but I am a full-time minister. And if I am a full-time minister, God is going to anoint me with the new anointing, amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah, to bring healing and salvation to my world. I love that, Mark. That's such a great word of encouragement because this is not just a message for somebody that maybe is gonna stand before hundreds of thousands of people or have some type of a ministry in the church. But I love what Brother Srillo said on the opening session, and today is session four. If you've missed session one, two, or three, please make sure that you go back but Brother Shirley said this new anointing is a personal message. Listen, this is a message for victory over areas of your life that maybe nobody else even knows that you're struggling with. This is not just some message that's just to make you great for God, but this is a message that God wants to release so that you can begin to walk in the greatness that he has in his heart for you. And I love today's message. Brother Srila brings us into a great truth. And that truth is that thinking little of ourself or thinking little of the power and the anointing that God wants to entrust and release in our life and through our life, thinking little of that is not a virtue thinking that we are just this little person, that God is just so far away, so breaks the heart of God. When God created man, the Bible says that we were not only created in his image, I want you to know something, you don't have a look-alike spirit. You have the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. You are a daughter, of God, you are a son of God. And thinking little of ourself, God created us and said, not only are we to be created in his image, but he said, I created you to dominate. I created you to have dominion over the earth and to live a life. When we say every day, I'm a part of God's end time plan and he hasn't planned any defeats. I want you to know something, God has not planned any defeats for us. And he wants us to take hold of this new anointing and he wants us to see him like maybe we have never seen him before. You know, Mark Brothers Rillo talked about, I think it was in day one or two, how that sometimes our environment, sometimes the experiences of our life, the enemy will try to use them to accuse God. Brother Rillo gave us that incredible plaque not to look at the bigness of our need, but to look at the bigness of our God because our circumstances, sometimes the enemy will use to accuse God. You see, what the devil is really trying to do is he's trying to get us to think little of ourself and he's trying to get us to think something about God that isn't true, to think little of God, to put limits on our relationship with God. Yeah, and that's why this message is also a message that requires from us to have a breakthrough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'll have to, what's the word? To gather some spiritual energy yep. in prayer, in decision, yep. in spiritual focus to get that breakthrough. Huh. And and it's 
not easy for us to put words on it, but this is an experience that the Spirit of the Lord Himself in your spirit is leading you to. So just let you, just surrender. God's going to take you into a time of prayer. God's going to take you in a time of surrendering. God's going to take you in time of maybe you're going to cry or whatever. This is the work of the Holy Spirit because you are ready to get your breakthrough. Ah, oh, man, Mark, what a great encouragement. And so many of you who are staying connected every day, you're doing exactly what Mark is talking about. You know, one thing I have discovered, it's not the major changes that you think you need to make in your life that are going to make everything all of a sudden great. But it is the consistent daily picking up your cross, going after God a little bit more maybe than you went after him the day before. I love the illustration of the ice cube that's in the freezer, 27 degrees. Now, I don't know, maybe in your nation, they use one different, one yeah, maybe they use centigrade, one but three. minus three or else in Fahrenheit, it's 27, 32 degrees is freezing. Zero. Yeah, and so every day, one degree, it's not a big change, but then it's 28, 29, 30, 31. And you see, here's what I believe. You and I are closer to this thing that Mark talked about. You're closer to your breakthrough than you realize. Listen, your breakthrough is not depending upon you going on a 30 day fast, but it's just depending on you maybe doing something just a little bit more bold, a little bit more intentional in your pursuit of God. And then all of a sudden the day comes when that degree goes to 33 and that ice that didn't change for six days begins to melt and disappear because of one degree that continued faithful. And that's what you're doing. So stay connected. Wow, I'm excited. Brother Srillo is coming day four. We can't wait to be back with you, to pray with you. I want you to join us in welcoming once again God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. Now we like to hide ministers and ministries like to hide. It's like somebody said, well, I don't have any power to heal the sick. We're so afraid of what the medical profession and what the ungodly atheists are going to say, brother. We try to hide behind the aspirin bottles and say, now, God works together with medicine. Now, I'm not against medicine. Don't walk. I probably lost half the churches. You know why? Because that's all we've got to give the people is a bottle of aspirin. Brother, you're looking at a preacher who believes in medical science. I don't knock medical science. I thank God for doctors who are doing their best and thank God for the hundreds and thousands of Christian born again, spirit filled doctors that we have in this world today. And there's not one of them that'll tell you that they can heal brother, but they'll tell you the only power in the world that can heal is the power of almighty God. But the time has come for us to stop letting him set our standards. If Jesus said, go on out and heal the sick, go out and heal them. Somebody said, you know, that's false humility. That's what it is, false humility. People trying to say, well, I don't want to draw attention to myself. I want to draw attention to God. 
Brother, let me tell you something. If God's inside you and his power's burning inside you and his works are being manifested inside you, you won't have to worry, brother. You'll be put so far in the background, it won't even be funny. He'll be the only thing that's seen. If it's real, if it's real. That they might do the work of the ministry. Jesus. 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 I think I'll just read these few scripture verses and then I've got to get off of this. His intention, his purpose. Was to make you razor sharp in the spirit world. Thirteenth verse. I don't know whether you'll take this or not. And in the comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of God, that we might really mature in manhood and in the completeness of personality, which is nothing less now I'm talking not to apostles, not to prophets, not to evangelists, not to pastors, not to teachers, but to the saints. The trouble with most of you is you're spending so much time trying to find out what your ministry is. That the devil has got you so confused that you don't know that you have a ministry and that ministry is to act like a saint of God and go out and do the work of God. I'm sick and tired of the devil putting down the church, putting down God's people. We are nothing less in this world than everything that Jesus Christ was. He is a son of God and so are we. Father, we thank you for your word today. Lord, we are going to rise up to this challenge to literally remove everything from our life that insulates us, God, from your word, from your presence, from your voice speaking to us. And Lord, we have to decrease that you might increase. And so God, I thank you for our precious students today. Lord, they are connecting with the power. Lord, we're taking the negative, we're taking the positive. Lord, we're asking your Holy Spirit to strip away, God, every insulation, God, every lie, everything that tells us we are not what you say we are. And God, today we declare that we are who you say we are. And today we're stepping in to our end time destiny Mark, I tell you what, we are getting an incredible experience going in to the underworld of Satan's plans and purposes, and he is being exposed, and God is rising up, and every enemy is being scattered. Amen. And God is for us. Amen. He is not against us. So good. And I love that 
what you always say that God does not try to have a conversation about Amen. our Amen. past. Zephaniah 3, the Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. Listen, he will take great delight Amen. in you. Amen. In his love, he will not rebuke you, but he will rejoice over you with thing, singing. Uh, God in heaven is singing over your life. You know, Mark, when you see that God, you see what you just did is so powerful is that you didn't take us to an experience that you had, which is a good thing, it's fine, we share, but you brought us to the Word of God. You see, this book is not a book of do's and don'ts. This book is not a book of do's and don'ts. This book is a declaration of who God really is. I can't encourage you enough to stay connected to the Morris Cirillo School of Ministry. Brother Cirillo has told us so many times, our teacher is the Holy Spirit. Our teacher is the Word of God. And I declare that we are being transformed. I believe that one of the greatest things that will happen in your life through this new anointing school of ministry is you will begin to see this God, this God of Zephaniah, this God that is rejoicing over you, this God who is saying, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God is not looking for ways to put pressure on your life. God is looking for ways to take pressure off of your life. And when we begin to see this God, when we begin to see the God of the new anointing that Morris Cirillo is preaching, it makes you run toward him. And I just declare today, the voice that pushes you away from God is never the voice of God. God is for you. The Bible says in Romans, Mark, one of my favorite scriptures, God did not hold back anything. He gave his only begotten son. So how is it now that he would not do anything, that he would not give anything? And I love what Paul said. He said, who is he that condemneth? He was talking about the voice of the accuser. He says, yea, rather it is Christ who is risen that ever lives to make intercession for you. The voice of God is a voice that is praying for you. It's a voice that is for you, not against you. And my God, we can rise up like Morris Cirillo rose up and go on the offensive when we know that, man, God is really for me. God is not having a conversation with me about my past. God is wanting so much more to have a conversation with you and I about our future. Let me encourage you. I don't know another book out that I have ever seen. Jesus Christ, our great high priest that exposes what Jesus really is right now. Jesus didn't just rise from the dead and go into heaven and go on vacation. He has a new ministry, an incredible ministry that will be an everlasting ministry. The Bible says he ever lives to make intercession for us. And so Lord, we just wanna praise you today. We wanna thank you, Lord, for reminding us today that thinking little of ourself is not your will for our life. Lord, agreeing with your word and saying we are what you say we are is what brings you great glory. And so, Lord, I pray for our students today. I pray for Mark, for me, Lord, that we would know you, Lord, as we've never known you before. Lord, we thank you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. We thank you for this new anointing, God, that we are receiving that's taking us past the point of blessing and into a new experience of your power. Lord, take all of the glory. Bless every one of our students today. 
God, let there not be one that is discouraged, but Lord, cause them to hear the voice of the intercessor today, saying, I know the plans that I have for you, not to harm you, but to prosper you. And so, Father, we thank you now that we can know that all things are working together, Lord, for our good and for your glory. And so, God, we thank you step by step. Each step is a miracle in Jesus mighty name. Amen. And everybody said, oh, man, my God, I just see the glory of God in this place. I see that presence of God that's right by your side right now. God is just wanting you to drink in of his love, to drink in of his peace, to drink in of his presence. You know, Mark, one of my favorite scriptures as we go off today, the Bible says in his presence, <laughs> his fullness of joy. There's nothing greater. So we just love you today, even though we're connected by Facebook or YouTube or by the podcast. Brother Srilo always would remind us that God is a spirit. And because he is a spirit, he's right by your side. That same power, that same presence that's here is right there with you. We can't wait to see you one day here at Legacy and to be able to spend eternity together worshiping the Lamb of God, getting to really know where you're from and who you are. We'll have eternity. Wow, it's going to be incredible to see Brother Cirillo and so many of the great men and women that have meant so much to us. Wow. Well, listen, tomorrow is going to be incredible. We are on a journey that's coming to a close. We'll have an amazing anointing and impartation service. But on behalf of Mark, on behalf of David Cirillo, Teresa Cirillo, I want to encourage you. Today is day four. Tomorrow is day five. Keep your connection. Your best is yet to come. We'll see you tomorrow for the new anointing School of Ministry, day five, live from Legacy, in Jesus' name.